John in chapter 14, verses 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's only one way to return to heaven, and that is by Jesus. No man can come to the Father but by Jesus. I don't care what the world teaches. I don't care about all these fancy new ways they come up with telling you uh, this is, there's another way to heaven. There's one way to heaven, and it is by Jesus. We live by faith. And at Mount Olive, we teach this. Faith is simply taking God at His word. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the, unto the Father but by me. Have faith. Take him at his word. Have faith in that statement. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. One way, not other ways, different ways, concocted by lost people, the way the lost world wants you to believe. One way, Jesus. One truth. It's a truth for everybody. It's Jesus, and He is the Christ. One life, one eternal life in Jesus, spent in heaven for eternity with God. Any path somebody is trying to tell you about other than that path will lead you straight to hell for eternity. A life separated from God, God is love, separated for eternity from love. Can you imagine for eternity? So what are we to do in the meantime before we die and after we've accepted the love of God and Jesus and we've received our salvation. What do we do in the meantime? Are we to just hang out? Do nothing? Wait to die? God forbid. Watch this. This is getting fun. God covers this for us. Watch in Matthew 22, verses 34 to 40. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So we see the Pharisees was trying to trap Jesus again by asking him this question. The Pharisees was trying to draw Jesus into an a, uh, argument regarding the extensive interpretation of over 600 Jewish laws. Jesus, being smarter than them, su summarizes the two tablets of law. Watch this. Responsibility to God. Responsibility to man. They couldn't find it follow that answer, could they? Let's look at this. First, we, we are to love God. Only a few passages are concerned with people's response of love toward God. There's only a few, possibly, because it would seem normal that people would love God. And think about it, as much as God has done for people and how they've experienced the love of God. However, watch this. The command to love God is important because it shows that God is approachable and he desires an intimate, loving, dynamic relationship that's involved in love with each of us. In 1 John 4, 19, we see, we love him because he first loved us. Second, we're to love our neighbors. The command is to love one's neighbors to the degree that one loves oneself. Since people are basically selfish and concerned about themselves, they should put the same degree of concern for their neighbors. But think about it. Who are our neighbors? In Deuteronomy 10, verses 19, Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. It is clear that neighbors are strangers. All people. We understand this better when we read the parable in Luke about the Good Samaritan that demonstrates that our neighbors aren't just friends or family or people of the same nationality. It's strangers also. People, all people. We're to love all people. Fellow believers, family, watch this. Here comes the tough one. Third, you are to love your enemies. Matthew 5, 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. 
Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So it's easy to understand this is for all people, for all our neighbors. We're to love them. Now watch. We are to take God, who dwells in us, in love. We're to take that love and share it with everyone, including our enemies. Oh, you're starting to see this, aren't you? The circle of love is starting to come together. The best way we can see the beginning is God through Jesus, the incarnate Jesus, isn't it? God's sacrifice. The next way for us to see God, to, to see that love of God, is through the children of God. At Mount Olive, we teach the incarnationality of Jesus. That's a fancy word. Showing the love of the uh, to the lost world, the love of Jesus through our actions and deeds. We teach when we have problems reaching people uh, or we're, we're having difficulty in communicating and connecting with people. Uh, Ms. Vicky said the other day, bake them a pie. Bake them some fried chicken. Do something. It's our actions and our deeds that we're able to take the love of God and share it with the lost world. The best Example of incarnationality of Jesus would be through some of the examples of mothers in the Bible. The sacrificial love of a mother. Let's look at one mother of the Bible in Exodus uh, chapter 1, 22 and Exodus 2, 3. And Pharaoh charged all his people saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. And when she could no longer hide him, she took him for an ark of bulrushes, daubed it with slime and with pitch, put the child therein. She laid it in the flags by the river's brim. Who are we talking about? Moses. Moses' mother had to give him up so she knew that he would have a chance to live. Praise God. She gave up her love, her life, so Moses would have a chance to live. Now that's love. That's the sacrificial love we're talking about now. How about another mother who was in a legal battle in the courts with another woman claiming the rights to the, the same child. The court had to decide on whose child this was. King Solomon had a really good idea. Watch this in 1 Kings 3 verses 25 and 26. And the king said, divide the living child in two. Give half to one and half to the other. Then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king. For her bowels yearned unto her, un, upon her son. And she said, O oh my Lord, give her the living child. And in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it neither be mine nor thine, but divide it. Now you know, King Solomon knew who the real mother was. The true mother of that child was the one that stood up and said, I sacrifice this child. I will give up my love and my life so this child could be raised by another woman, but at least that child can live. That's sacrificial love. I think we're starting to get it. This is why we celebrate Mother's Day. Sacrificial love. It's all about sacrifice. We find love best through God and through Jesus. God also shows us the epitome of love through a woman. We can all learn from this on this wonderful day, the Mother's Day, Day of Love, especially as men. We really have, we can't conceive truly of that sacrificial love that a woman can understand. A woman sacrifices so much for so many. Some women sacrifice their lives to give birth. All women sacrifice so much for so many to have a better life. We're blessed in this church of all the women that, that sacrifice so much. Vicki and I was talking about a beautiful image the other day, and i got to tell you, it changed my life. 